Road Atlanta was the venue for the final race of the 2015 TAS season. In the GTLM class, reigning champions and 2015 Le Mans 24 hour winners Corvette looked to be too far back to retain their United Sports Car titles. Instead, a resurgent Porsche would be taking on BMW for the silverware. Add in a competitive prototype division, and Petit Le Mans was set to be a classic. It's been a real battle for us here at Corvette Racing. This balance of performance has not necessarily been in our favour and the Porsche has been super strong most of the year. In some other races we've really found that we've had some great runs and some really good strong efforts but things just haven't really run for us. We're coming into Petit Le Mans, it's a do or die situation. Whoever wins this race wins all three championships. The drivers, the manufacturers and the team championships, so it's all on the line. So far it's been a great year but we've still got one round to go and um, obviously we've got a six-point lead, so it's been a good season. It would just be a fantastic achievement if we could finish it off. It's really been an unbelievable season. We've just gotten stronger and stronger and stronger. After Sebring, it just became a charge, and we just started gelling more and more and more. So here we are, we're second in points, and uh, six points out of lead, and uh, a lot can happen in 10 hours. With Curran and Cameron bringing the title challenge in-house to 2014 winners Barbosa and Fittipaldi, it would be both sides of the Action Express garage taking the fight to Richard Westbrook's number 90. There can be a little rubbing of paint here or there, but we can't take each other out. And it's important that we get to the end of this 10-hour race and, and have a successful run and really finish 1-2 in the championship. Dana and Eric are doing a, a great job. We're actually we're tied in the championship. 31 and the 5 car are both 6 points behind the 90 car. If we get a podium, we've won the championship, irrespective of what anyone else does. If we do have an issue and the action car doesn't win, if they come second, we only have to come fourth or fifth. During practice, Corvette were working hard to match their Le Mans form, while Patrick Pillay's 911 Porsche and Bill Orbelin's 25 BMW were preparing for a title showdown. Right now, we're just a few points behind the 911 Porsche of uh, Patrick Pillay. We basically have to be in front of them to win. We're going to run eight hours of this race conservative, two hours of this race out of control, and we're going to put it all on the line. The main goal is just we try to win the race like this. It's easier for the, for the points. We don't have to make uh, any strange strategy or whatever. If you win, it's clear you win the championship as well. In the prototype challenge class, John Bennett and Core Autosport had the championship all tied up, while in GTD, history was in the making, as Christina Nielsen was hoping to become the first woman to win the division. I'm proud to be a driver who's leading this championship, but to be a female leading it is, is of course, a, a pretty cool thing. It's, it's something that hasn't been done before, winning this championship, so to be able to be the first female and, and be a part of the history books in that sense would be such a cool accomplishment. As the driver's customary track walk took place, it was the last time Road Atlanta would see a dry course over the race weekend. For the final qualifying round of 2015, Mother Nature was about to provide a torrential downpour, throwing championship strategies into chaos. Road Atlanta is a very challenging circuit. It's a challenging circuit when the weather gods are playing ball. When it's not, then people who've been here before and have survived in bad weather do have an advantage because that could be a massive, massive component of who takes home championships this weekend. Weather was the talk of the paddock on race day, the rain causing havoc for teams, officials and loyal fans. Texas P, baby! Texas P! Richard Westbrook had qualified on pole overall in his prototype with Ollie Gavin in the number four Corvette starting at the front in GTLM. Porsche, however, weren't so lucky, starting at the back of the grid due to mechanical problems. Really, really difficult conditions, but we've got a good car in the wet. We managed to get the pole. Signs are good, but, you know, it's, anything can happen in these conditions. You know, starting from the pole is a good thing, and it might give me a bit of an advantage at the start, so I can be able to see where I'm going, so that'd be kind of nice. Great flag for the final time in the Tuna United Sports Car Championship. Richard Westbrook leads them out. It's soaking here at Road Atlanta. This is going to be a test for everyone. Westbrook put on an impressive wet driving clinic and absolutely dominated the first two hours of racing. But Action Express was not going to be left behind and kept the number 90 in their sights. Now is a, you're going to really see the difference between uh, who really wants it or who doesn't. I think these situations are the situations where it separates the boys from the men. 
In the fiercely contested GTLM class, the Porsches handled far better than the rest in the wet, with Corvette chasing behind, fending off the BMWs. I mean, it seems to be that the Porsches are working quite good in the rain, but it's really, really difficult to drive. Both Corvettes up in uh, good fighting positions, so yeah, it's a long way to go, but uh, just keep fighting all day. Conditions were getting treacherous when Michael Valiente spun the number 90 car at turn 12. Come back with, go back with Oh, I can't believe this. Valiente is stranded mid-track. This is very dangerous indeed. The number 90's title hopes disappeared when just 50 minutes later, Mike Rockenfeller came off at the exact same spot. This is disaster for the championship leaders. Rockenfeller reversing blind into traffic. He's put it back on the grass. More spins and a scare for Team Falcon on their last outing prompted officials to red flag the race. The weather conditions are insane. I mean, it's some of the most insane driving I've ever done. I mean, it's 180 miles an hour down the back straight, and every other lap you can't even see the car in front of you. There are quite a lot of rivers in, uh, in turn one, and in the SS it's really tricky, really, really hard. Uh, but the problem at the end, there is many places, even in a straight line, you cannot stay flat, so it starts to be really dangerous. It's kind of scary, overwhelming feeling going down the straight, and the car starts to aquaplane. All we can do is, is hope and uh, keep our heads up. After a red flag stoppage of over an hour, the cars were sent back out just as heavy rain started again. Pit stop strategies reshuffled the pack. Christina Nielsen's championship dreams were shattered in GTD, while things were looking up for Eric Curran in the number 31 Action Express prototype as he took the lead. Further back, the GTLMs were tightly bunched behind Corvette's Oliver Gavin. But under the safety car, Nick Tandy, who climbed aboard the 911 Porsche, rejoining the race in ninth, he passed a trio of prototypes. There was another full course yellow due to the number 54 Core Autosport entry crashing into the wall. At the restart, and with the rain worse than ever, Nick Tandy was on a mission. He completed his surge through the entire field to incredibly take overall victory and the GTLM title for Porsche. Barbosa and Fittipaldi narrowly beat their Action Express teammates to defend their prototype title. Two championships in a row is not easy to achieve. And uh, we did it in a, in a really uh, difficult way and a tough way and uh, very surprising. I didn't know if I was supposed to celebrate when the race finished because I was like so lost out there, you know. But everything worked out well. I'm really, really happy and proud to be part of the Action Express group. To come from last position to first position overall though, <laughs> you know, we're clearly the best team this year, and for me to win uh, Le Mans and uh, Petit Le Mans both overall, pretty good year. I'm, I'm pretty happy.